everything. I'm going to show you how to apply cream products with sponges. I'm also going to review these sponges I was sent by Barely. And I'm going to review the Cover FX Cream Contour Kit because I figured it was all linked, so why not do it all in one? So if you want to see one or all of those things, then just keep watching. So according to the bump that comes with it, the orange or kind of nudie coloured one is meant for base products, so primer, foundation, stuff like that. So that's exactly what I'm going to use it for. The primer I'm going to try out with is the Hourglass Veil Mineral Primer. Um, the only thing is, because it's a shape that I'm not used to and has these kind of flat sides, it did take a minute just to figure out where the product was in relation to the sponge, if that makes any sense. That's kind of why I aimed high for a minute. Next up, as usual, I'm going to do some colour correcting and I'm going to use the Physician's Formula Nude Wear Touch of Glowing Pen thing for that. flat edge because you can really get up underneath your lashes which is hard to do with some sponges and the pointy end is really nice because you can really kind of you know get in here all right foundation so because I wanted to do this tutorial mostly with uh, cream products I'm gonna use something that I haven't shown on here before as far as I'm aware which is the cover effects total cover cream foundation and this is in G20 for foundation first of all because of the size it fits into your hand nicely also I think the flat edge is really good because you can kind of get in all of the little crevices it kind of fits around the contours of your face really nicely and it just kind of made quick work of it so so far so good so the next step in my kind of base routine is to apply an eye primer so I'm going to use the Illuminari all day eye color in latte to apply this first of all I'm going to use the pointy end and then I'll probably use the flat end to buff it around so for that I do think I actually prefer a brush for that product at least I don't think it's anything to do with the sponge I just don't think it's a good match I just think that that product blends in easier with a kind of fluffy brush but if you use a more kind of cream eye base opposed to a kind of liquid or moussey eye base I think it would work really well so the other sponge they make is their hard sponge and it does feel a little bit firmer than the soft one to the touch. So they recommend you use this for contouring, highlighting, smudging and gliding. Gliding? Guiding. Imagine if you could just glide with it. Um, anyway, so by smudging and guiding what they mean is you would be able to use kind of the sharp tip to smudge out eyeliner or to guide you for a winged eyeliner. It is cream, contour and highlight time. And I'm going to use the Cover FX Cream Contour Palette, which I haven't done a review solely on this yet, so I'll try and give you a little bit of information on it as we go. So I just want to say that generally doing cream highlighting and contouring this way isn't my preferred method. I usually would use a brush, so this should be interesting. So I'm going to take number three, which is the lighter kind of bronze or contour shade on the sharp edge. And I'm just going to swipe this where I want some bronzer to be. It feels like you have a little bit more um, control over it just because it is a little bit firmer It's not going to kind of buckle the same way that the softer one would it does have a little bit more kind of oomph to it Yeah, and I guess I'm just gonna use that same flat side to try and blend it out and see how we go Thought when you're using it on your face, it does almost feel like um, it wouldn't 
be able to blend things out just because of how firm it is, but it actually does a good job and makes it really easy. I would say it's kind of a similar way of blending things out as to use like a flat top kabuki. Next I'm going to take number four from that palette again on the sharp edge and I'm just going to kind of define things a little bit more. And I think I'm going to use the other end to blend it out. So I'm going to do a little bit more around my forehead and my jaw. forehead or like cheeks maybe but you also do have the pointy end which is going to blend things out nicely and give a kind of softer line and then you have the completely flat end which you can be really really precise with so you have a great range of kind of uses for them both of them since they are the same shape so next up I am going to do a little bit of highlighting so I'm going to take the number one from this palette so for the under eye highlight I have it on the end just so I can get it right up underneath my lashes <laughs> It is nice that it's stiff and you can get right up underneath there, so I do really like that. And I also think that edge would be really good to clean up eye makeup with. So if you wanted like a really precise kind of line underneath your eyeshadow, I think you could really get it with that and it would be very sharp. I'm going to highlight a couple of other areas on my face and blend them out and see how that goes. sharp controlled line with it but you also can blend things out so that they look a bit more seamless. So the last step in that cover effects palette is to do a little bit of highlighting and I already know that I really like this shimmer highlight from here. It's the number two product. I'm gonna go for the flat side again. too much in this light but probably when I go out into the sun later I'm gonna blind everyone. I did a really good job of blending that into cream. Highlights can be a little bit strange to apply sometimes. Um, either they'll pick up product underneath them or just kind of move things around but um, that worked really well and obviously I'm using a cover effects base as well as the cover effects highlight and contour kit so that obviously helps because everything's going to be formulated to work together and I think the sponge did a great job again. Um, I think that tip is great for kind of areas like this. You can use the tip corner for kind of like these areas. I really like it. So the last couple of things to try with these are um, blush and then powder to set my eyes. So I don't actually have a cream blush per se. Um, I do have the OCC cream color concentrate in grandma, but it just comes out too red for me to feel comfortable using it. That's why there's a little bit of red on here now. What I am going to use that isn't a cream blush, but is as good as I have right now, is the Illamasqua Gleam Cream in Supernatural. And it is a um, shimmery finish, so it's not something everyone's going to want to use, but it's pretty much the best thing I have to try this out on. <music> And then use this round side almost as if it's kind of like the front of your cheek and then just kind of buff back from there. I thought that worked really well. And then just to take a kind of like rounded edge just to, you know, blend away any lines or anything and just make it a bit more seamless. Powder is the last thing to try. I'm going to use the e.l.f. Mineral Concealer. And I don't know what colour it is, because I guess that's where they um, get their savings from. But the number on the back is 4C01AE. I don't know if that's even the colour. I'm a little bit nervous about this. Like I said, I'm not used to using sponges for these kind of things. So it is all a 
little bit of a learning process, but I actually did really like it for that. I like that you can kind of cover a big area with it, you can also be very precise and sharp with it, and then you have the pointier edge to kind of blend things out in all of the little areas. So I think that covers everything base-wise with those sponges. I'm going to go ahead and do my eye makeup, and then I will be right back to give you my final thoughts on both the sponges and the cover effects compact. So now I've done my eyes and a little bit of colour on my lips. I do wish that I had gone a little bit darker on the contouring and everything, but overall I'm really really pleased with it. Starting with the contour kit, I really do love this. The colours are all very blendable, buildable, um, they have a great colour range, so basically as long as you know whether you are like fair, light, medium, dark, and if you are pink, yellow or neutral undertones, you will be able to find one that suits you. I think any more than this in a cream palette would be unnecessary for the average person. I think two contour colours are plenty. If you just wanted to warm up your face a bit without any other makeup even, you could just use number three and maybe a little bit of number one under your eyes and I think you'd have a really super natural look. But then if you do want to go a bit darker or you kind of get a little bit darker in the summer, you can use four. I think this is a great concealer highlighter colour. And number two is a really nice shimmer highlight. I wore it the other day and throughout the whole day I was catching like a light right here and it just looked really very natural. I've even put it on top of powders after forgetting and that still worked. So yeah, overall a very good kit. And as far as the sponges go for applying everything, I was not surprised. Um, I didn't think that they would be bad. I just didn't know how much I would like them and how kind of versatile they are. I do think if you only want to get one of them, maybe get the softer one just because you're still going to be able to smooth out more kind of delicate areas, but you're still going to be able to like use the end to chisel and so on. But if you are a makeup product collector, I would get both because I think they both are very useful in their own right. So yeah, very impressed with them too. Yeah, I hope this was helpful and I hope you didn't mind it being a kind of shared review demo tutorial layout. If that's something you do or don't like, then definitely let me know. And I'll see you next time.